Hello, my beautiful ducks. It's your friendly puppeteer, and I'm back again with another Steven Universe vlog, and a little, a little uh, sooner than I expected to be, which is nice. But uh, this evening's episode is it could have been great. And hey, remember last time? You know, remember last two episodes? I was having a fun time. You know, having lots of fun, learning about characters, just having a nice party. Yeah, now it's gone. No, it's it's intense now. I told you, I told you it would be intense. All right, you doing vlogs as long as I have. You notice a pattern within the episodes. I mean, Rebecca's pretty unpredictable, but like. Two episodes in to the week, and you're like, "Oh, this is pretty cute." No, it, she's gonna just—it's—it's it's, all—it's all over. This is madness. This episode is madness. Want to get into the madness? All right. So, uh, Stephen and the gems are just chilling out, uh, and while well, Paradise finish up the drill, and she doesn't understand why the gems can just you know sit back and relax when there's so much work to be done. And so Stephen teaches her the true ethics of music through dance and jazz. But on Paradox Planet, music and dance and jazz are banned. So they run through abandoned strip malls, and that doesn't happen. But, uh, you know, Paradox doesn't really know how to relax or, you know, how to sing. Well, she knows. Her voice actor knows how to sing, obviously. She's, she's a very good singer, actually. First, the first time we've heard her sing, it's pretty good, you know. Nothing Estelle, like, you know, boom, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard, but it's, you know, it's nice to hear, it's nice to hear anybody sing, except me. Um, so, you know, she sings a song with Steven about, you know, the happiness and the peace and the love on planet Earth and all that nice stuff, and it seems like Peridot is finally understanding that there's more to planet Earth than just a little detour of, you know, destroying the cluster on her journey, maybe. Maybe there's something more to this planet. Spoiler, it, she doesn't take anything away from it. It's not a spoiler if you're watching my vlogs, guys. Let's be honest. Um, so, uh, they finish the drill, which I'm happy they just wrapped that up. I really didn't want to go. Like, I love the, you know, building episodes, but I really don't want to go through, like, five more episodes of them just, you know, building a drill and the mishaps and doohickeys that come up along the way. So, yeah, the drill is finished. The only thing that they need to destroy the cluster, or, I guess, go and find the cluster, is the coordinates to do so, and the only place to find that is on Dr. Manhattan's moon base. So, they go up to the moon. Yep, they go up to the moon through Lion, who gets pretty injured in this episode, and they kind of just shy away from it. I don't know if there's if something's going to happen with them. I'm guessing so, because of the way this episode ends. Um, I, I don't know, maybe that was just me. Obviously something is going to happen with them, or if not, then that's a really weird scene to add in. But uh, I digress. <clears throat> so they go to the moon, uh, and uh, Stephen can breathe. Okay, it's a cartoon, whatever. Uh, and we we learn a bit about uh, that gems are created to instantly adapt to the gravitational laws or poles of the planet they're on, so they wouldn't float on the moon, but Steven can because he's half human, half gem. Why doesn't he also associate uh, the gem thing about gravity? Because he's half gem. It's a cartoon. He can breathe on the moon. All right, just cut him some cut him some slack. All right, jeez, it was his birth his birthday, I think. Kind of, sort of his birthday. Anyway, um, so, yes, yeah, so Steven's hip-hop popping around, and he comes across all these pictures of uh, the Diamond Authority, the blue diamonds, the yellow diamonds, all the diamonds you need to make a beautiful chest plate in Minecraft. And it turns out that all gems are created to serve these Diamond Authority figures. Uh, you know, they're pretty much just their servants, which you can kind of see in, you know, the answer. That the rubies are pretty much just created, you know, to serve these, uh, these uh, blue diamond at least, and sapphire is kind of just there to predict the future for her. You know, they don't really mean anything to her, which uh, gives reason to why there was a rebellion. You know, they're not just rebellious kids out there. And uh, then Peridot activates something that makes stairs happen, and walking on stairs happen, and they go up the stairs, and stuff happens. They find a they find a moon base, uh, a pretty cool you know Tom from Toonami sort of moon base rebel taxi thing. Uh, that's what it, that's what it reminded me of the uh, if you remember the Toonami, you know you know Tom from Toonami and he had his like you know cartoon thing and he'd, like he'd like sit back in his chair and he'd like play the cartoon. You know what I'm talking about. Why do I have to explain myself? That's what it reminded me of personally. Um, so yeah, they uh, they find the files they need to find the coordinates. It looks, I mean. It was, it, it's like a, it's like a, you know, a 
frame or two shot, but it looks like it's somewhere in Nevada, maybe? Yeah, I'm gonna, I don't know, I'll look at a screenshot of it later. But, yeah, so, they have the coordinates for the cluster, they have everything they need, but Peridot's not done with her files yet, after she, uh, finds, like, 20 videos of cute cats in her files, you know, these, these diamond authorities, you know, they're just normal people, like you and me, they gotta have some fun sometimes. They, uh, find a, well, not a prototype, they find a demo of, or a, you know, a diorama of what Earth would look like if it was, you know, if the cluster plan happened, and, you know, it's full of holes, it's full of rings, I guess, there's all kinds of gem communication things on it, it, it looks bad, alright, it looks, it looks like a, a mushroom war, and also, speaking of kind of post-apocalyptic thing, maybe this was just me, but did anybody notice that it looked like Russia was missing, or a, a giant chunk of Asia was missing on Peridot's map? I don't know. I've only seen the episode once, obviously, but I don't know. Maybe I'll just look back and I'll say it something differently. Anyway, I digress. Um, so, upon seeing this, the gems are like, oh, well, that's bad, but they're, you know, they're kind of happy that they stopped the plan while it was, you know, still in motion. It couldn't possibly do that anymore. It's still going to turn bad, as Peridot points out to them, and she also points out that Rose Quartz's mission doesn't seem to be working too well, does it? And that's no good, because the gems just lose it right there. Garnet's about to pound her into the face, but Steven stops her just in time. And it looks like all the gems, all the gems are pretty mad Peridot right now. So yeah, whenever Peridot does something redeeming, she instantly does something irredeemable. So, she's like the political metaphor that I can't think of off the top of my head. I, don't, I would have said Trump, but he doesn't do much redeeming stuff. Come at me, internet. Um... But, uh, it's kind of, it kind of stops at, like, it kind of stops at that, it's, uh, you know, the gems leave, they destroy Tom's Toonami's, uh, station, and, uh, Peridot and Steven are there. Peridot's, you know, wondering why the gems got so mad at her, and Steven says that it's because, you know, they really care about Earth, and he thought that Peridot picked that up from, you know, that amazing song they sang at the beginning of the episode, and... You know, Peridot's like, oh, what? and she steals this little thing. I think it's like a, I don't know what it is. They they don't say what it is. She steals it. They run out. Steven looks dramatically into the camera. And the episode ends. Uh, it's the first episode to really end like that off the top of my head. Like, just on like that kind of cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, no, uh, pretty intense episode. For, I mean, for Steven Universe standards, it's not that intense. But for Steven's birthday so far this week, you know, the laid-back, nice storytelling of such a romantic story between Ruby and Sapphire. And the day after is a nice little family party with a few friends for Steven's birthday. And the day after, it turns out that Rose Quartz, lady everybody loves, is complete poop. And, uh, yeah, this is what the planet will look like. You know, completely destroyed. Yeah, I do that. Me, Peridot. Yep, it's, a uh, it's pretty bad. It gets pretty... Pretty bad, pretty quick. And a lot of people are, you know, getting mad everywhere that, you know, Garnet was too reactive. What are you, Sean Covey? I mean, she's justified for her actions if you if you're making fun of Rose Quartz, all right? I mean, buddy, you know, I I, I got I know my boundaries, but Rose Quartz, hey, ain't doing it for me. But uh, I can't think of too much to say about the episode that wouldn't also tie in to other episodes that I've pretty much already talked about. But it is really cool to see this set up to a storyline, which was probably the reason that this Stephen's Birthday Week was created, just to wrap up this cluster storyline, or further progress it to a point that the next few episodes, unless there's a hiatus after the Stephen Bomb, which, knowing the Stephen Bombs, would not be completely out of the blue. But uh, anyway, um, you know, kind of wrapping up a little storyline that could lead into maybe the next, you know, handful of episodes is going to be about defeating the cluster, which, uh, that's my prediction, at least. With two more days left and, you know, two more episodes left, I think the, I think it's safe to say that might be the direction they're heading. But, yeah, uh, I wouldn't say that, like, you know, it, like, came out of left field, this incredible direction pace, uh, incredible pace change, you know, this change in intensity and, you know, the antics are higher. No, everybody's, I mean, okay, if you've been watching Steven Universe as long as I have, it's, literally my job but no if you've been watching steven universe and you like you kind of knew the signs from last episode 
But yeah, no, they don't really go that that long uh, with a whole bunch of cutesy episodes without being like, oh, we have a story. Yeah, you're right. Rebecca Sugar's pretty keen on her storytelling. She she has an idea in mind, and you know she's not gonna let a lot get in the way. As as obvious by the sense of the Cartoon Network and some of the stuff she's gotten away with. Looking at you keeping it together, and Rainbow Quartz looking in his face. So pretty much, uh, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna sound like I'm just bumbling on, but I can't think of too much to say about this episode. It's it's good, it's good, but it's obviously just a puzzle piece to a much larger you know scale, and I don't think I'd really be fit to comment on if I really loved it that much individually without knowing the full storyline yet. But for what it was, a pretty good episode, uh, I guess. Um, there were some, I wouldn't say out of character moments, but you know, everybody loves to hate Peridot sometimes. Uh, it was it was just a pretty okay episode, but it's obviously not supposed to be a standalone episode. It's supposed to be an episode that you can, you know, put into the puzzle of this entire new storyline they're making. So obviously, you know, my, my opinions won't be exactly the same when I see the end of this storyline. But until then, pretty good episode. I love the song at the beginning. The beginning scene where they're all just hanging out and stuff, that entire time, until they go to the moon, this episode is amazing. And then after that, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's amazing after that, but the before they go to the moon is amazing. It's like it's like the Wally of Steven Universe episodes. Before they go into space, it's great. When they're in space, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, but besides that, not much to say. I will see you guys tomorrow for the second to last Steven Bomb episode. And until then, go watch it. Chica chica. Paradox done goofed.